All right, now there's just a point for calculator. Oh, you don't get to use a calculator in the test, but you do. No, uh, for doing the homework anyway. When you're using a calculator, if there's more than one thing on the top or the bottom of a fraction, you must put it in parentheses. If there's more than one thing on the top or bottom of a fraction, you need to put that in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator doesn't know that they're both on the bottom. So what do you get now? 5.26, what are the units on that? Uh, seconds. Right, or what are some other units? Uh, seconds over one second. So how would you interpret that? Um, it takes 5.26 seconds for every one complete cycle. Yeah, it takes five point, pretty much five and a quarter seconds to go through a cycle. Okay. Right, so yeah, I guess I messed up at, at the beginning. Like you saw, I didn't tell you the mass at the start, but you really need to know the mass to finish it. So if we say the mass is two kilograms, then we can solve this. All right, and again, uh, this is just to point out why it's useful to have a nice clear version of this flow chart. You get to use a cheat sheet, right? Mm -hmm. You might want to put this in, in your cheat sheet. Because again, we have to, here we have to go one, two, three, four different steps. And if the formulas are all scattered all over the place, it can be hard to see how to go back and forth between these. Okay, uh, so that gives us uh, those formulas there. Going back to a wave again for a second. What did we call this distance again? Uh, yeah, or lambda. Good. Now, if we heard the concept of amplitude, how would I label the amplitude on this graph? Take a guess. What do you think is the distance that the amplitude represents? Okay. Yeah, so your guess is that the amplitude is from crest to trough. Okay, that seems like a reasonable guess. It turns out, though, that the amplitude is from equilibrium to crest. I don't think there really is a special symbol for amplitude. Well, maybe capital A. I use capital A for amplitude. Whenever you're labeling a distance, you have to label where it starts and where it ends. So the amplitude is from equilibrium to trough. Or from equilibrium to crest because we're going to be just assuming we have symmetrical waves. Well, if you have a symmetrical wave, the distance from equilibrium to crest should be the same as the, as the distance from equilibrium to trough. I don't think I drew them the same on the board, but I was trying to draw them the same. Uh, and the amplitude is just the positive distance. So we don't worry about uh, whether we're up above or below here. It's just the positive distance. So even for the trough. Um, now, the amplitude then is the maximum displacement from equilibrium. That's another good definition of the amplitude that you should have in, in, your, in your notes. Can you see why we would say that the amplitude is the maximum displacement from equilibrium? Because it's the furthest we ever get away from equilibrium. The crest is the furthest we get away from equilibrium. And then the trough is the furthest we get away. Uh, we get away. So notice that the wave is usually not at its amplitude. The displacement is usually less than the amplitude. The displacement is usually less than the amplitude. Here, the displacement is about half the amplitude. At this point, the displacement is about half the amplitude because this is this, the displacement, right? This distance here is how far we've been displaced from equilibrium. Now, the amplitude of the wave is still A. Even at this point, we're just not up at A. The amplitude is the maximum that the displacement ever is. So the displacement is usually less than its maximum. The amplitude, though, tells you that maximum displacement from equilibrium, from crest to equilibrium or from trough to equilibrium. Now, if I expand the spring and let it go, we know it's going to start oscillating back and forth. So let's say I let go of it over here. Then it's going to say move to here, and then move back, and then move back, 
if I keep oscillating like this. So which distance is the amplitude here? Because wherever you let go of it, that's the maximum displacement, mm -hmm. right? Once you let go of it, it's going to move back in. Mm -hmm. It's not going to move further out. Mm -hmm. And when it comes back again on the next cycle, it's not going to get past where you let go of it the first time. Uh, is mass displacement different than, because um, is it A, the distance, can I interpret it as A being the distance from its natural length to the stretching? But is it just the end? So A is the same the concept in both of these cases. Okay. A is the maximum displacement from equilibrium. So if you let go oh, of it right here, then this distance here, I think you already labeled this in your picture, this distance yeah. is the amplitude. And then uh, if this is the furthest thing it gets, you could also say the amplitude is the distance from maximum compression to here. Now remember that usually the displacement is less than the amplitude. For example, a second after I let go of it, the spring is going to be over here. So then the displacement would be this long. But its amplitude is still this. The amplitude is the maximum it's going to stretch, even if it's not at that point right now. Okay. So if you let go of it, you're letting go of it from its, with the point when the displacement is at the amplitude. Okay. And then the displacement will get smaller and smaller until you get to the natural length. Mm -hmm. And then the displacement will get bigger and bigger and bigger towards compression until you get to the amplitude on that side. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum compression. And then the displacement will start to get smaller and smaller again as you go back to the natural length. And then the displacement will get bigger and bigger as you get back towards the maximum expansion. And when, the displa and when you're back to the maximum expansion, the displacement is equal to the amplitude again. The amplitude is the maximum stretching that you ever get to, or the maximum compression you ever get to. So even though a spring is not a wave, we can still apply the concept of amplitude to it. We can't apply the concept of wavelength to it, but we can apply the concept of amplitude. Because the, the fundamental definition of amplitude is maximum displacement from equilibrium. Well, springs get displaced from their equilibrium. Yes, that's right. We interpret the natural length as the equilibrium. That's right. If you're talking about a sound wave, If you change the wavelength of the sound wave, how is that psychologically perceived? We talked about this earlier. Um, the frequency needs to adjust. Um, they're inversely related. So is the frequency going up or down? Down. Good. But we still haven't said, how is that psychologically perceived? How does your brain tell you that the frequency has changed? Because you know that you don't hear a little voice in your head saying, uh, the frequency has changed. How does it sound different? Yeah, low frequency means a lower pitch. So I just wanted to briefly review. A big wavelength means a low pitch. Well, now we should ask, what does a big amplitude mean? If you change the amplitude of a wave, how is that psychologically perceived? By the way, how, how could I draw a wave here with um, a bigger amplitude? Well, you would draw it like this. And you see how this has the same wavelength as before, because there's the same distance from crest to crest, but now there's a bigger amplitude, because there's a bigger maximum displacement. So now we've drawn a bigger amplitude. Now, how's that psychologically perceived? What, what, what's, how's the sound going to change? We know that if, you, if you're changing the, the wavelength or frequency of a sound, it sounds like the, the pitch is changing. Well, what else is there about the sound that can change if you're changing the amplitude? Um, the, um, you're not changing the frequency. Yeah, we're not changing the frequency. Why not? Because we're not changing the wavelength. So how would this be psychologically perceived? So this is not a math question. Um, this is just asking, how does your brain register amplitude? Well, the other thing that you notice about the sound, besides its pitch, is its loudness. Mm -hmm. The other thing that your brain notices is how loud the sound is. Well, do you think that this wave is going to be louder or softer? Louder. 
Yeah, the greater amplitude makes it louder. Okay. So um, when your ear is being hit by waves that have a greater amplitude, your brain interprets that as loudness. And when your ear is being hit by um, sound waves that have a, uh, a lower frequency, your brain interprets that as pitch. Okay, so it's good to see how these things in the wave, uh, again, your brain doesn't tell you, uh, hi, you have, you're hearing a higher amplitude. You actually just, it just feels louder. You, you, you've probably seen sometimes like on some kind of stereo system or sound system, sometimes they have little graphs showing the sound, and when the sound is very loud, the graph is spiking up and down very quickly. And when it's soft, it's pretty close. So it's kind of measuring the amplitude of the waves. What, what would the amplitude be if, if there was no sound? Well, then the wave would just be flat like this. Um, and then, then you wouldn't be hearing anything. Okay, so the amplitude is related to the loudness. 